Hello, artist Charles Wolf here. Hope you're all doing great today. I know that I am. Another beautiful day here in North Carolina. We have snow, maybe tomorrow. I'm kind of excited about, th about that. Uh, possibly having snow. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be great. I hope it does snow. Um, I'm from California originally, and in California, where I live in the Central Valley, it didn't snow very much. It just didn't happen. I think I saw it snow maybe once, maybe twice ever in my entire life in the Central Valley. In the actual valley. Now, you go to the Sierra Nevada mountains, of course, you can find snow there in abundance. But where I'm from, where I lived in Modesto, California, uh, not much snow. So, have, living here now in North Carolina, um, near Raleigh, the capital, uh, lots of more possibility for snow, so I'm um, much more excited. Uh, I'm sure it'll wear off eventually once I've lived here long enough, and I will be like, okay, snow is good. Enough snow. Anyways, enough about snow. I don't know why I'm talking about snow. Today is our Q&A video. I, a couple weeks ago, about two weeks I think it was, I asked you all for f feedback and for questions, really, for me. And I got a couple of them, so I'm going to answer the ones I got. Didn't get a lot, but that's okay. As the blog grows and as people, more people watch my YouTube videos, I'm sure I'll get more questions. But today I'm going to start with the basic ones. The first one I have here is, let me look here. Tell us about yourself and your other interests. Well, uh, my name is artist Charles Wolf. You all know that. Um, I am a visual artist, and I like working on mediums like pastels and paintings and, of course, drawing and all those artsy sort of things that I like to do, creating pieces of artwork, and I like to share that all with you, um, either on my blog, impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com, or through my Facebook page, or on my Twitter. My other interests include music. I am a pianist and a uh, piano teacher, actually. That's my main job, is teaching piano lessons to kids and adults each and every week. And so they're going to have my students come into my studio here at my home. They actually get to see my new So I am actually a professional week. pianist. I've been trained to that level in piano performance. And I enjoy playing music very much. But I also really like painting. So that's kind of a toss-up. What do I spend my time on? Playing piano? are doing more painting, and I have to try to find a nice balance between the two of those interests and, and pursuits. Uh, my other interest is music composition. I like composing and writing my own music. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I like walking and taking photography. I like walking in nature and uh, just enjoying uh, hiking and uh, things you like know, that. You know what normal people do? Watching YouTube videos, Netflixing, uh, relaxing. That playing board games, oh, I can't mention board games. Yeah, board games. I love board games. Board games are one of my favorite things to do. Great way to get out of the house, get out of being in front of a computer screen, video editing. It's a way for me to bond and socialize. So with I people. love board games. Is what I'm trying to say. I love them. I think they're great. They're a lot of fun, and I like to play not just Monopoly or Risk or Sorry. Those are the classics. But I love playing games like Dominion, Agricola, um, Orleans. Um, we were just playing Suburbia the other night. Uh, Time Stories just came out. I've been playing through that. Um, Pandemic Legacy, my all-time favorite. Question number two. Ever. Let's move on. How did you become interested in art, in abstract art, and have you had any training? Well, let's start with the interest in art. Well, I think I started being interested in art from a very early age. I remember since I was five or six, I started drawing, and it started with stick figure battles, and I'd have whole pages filled with little guys holding swords battling and it out and, uh, in orange on one side and green drawing on the other. that way very two dimensionally started slowly working on my skills and getting better at drawing three dimensional objects and things like that um, I never really took drawing that seriously it was always just something that I like to do and I didn't really think when I got to high school it. I was shown some of the Bob Ross painting videos which are you know real fun to watch and um, while they are somewhat repetitive and people really don't like him or they really do like him or whatever I'm not here to debate that I'm just gonna say that I watched his videos I learned something from his videos and I took what I could from his style I don't like every painting he does canned kind of generic but he was able to communicate effectively at least the building blocks of how to paint and boy you can start with painting and that's a good thing uh, great uncle Shorty he was a fantastic artist he was taught self-taught did uh, drawings and I'll do probably more drawing videos coming up eventually and I'll show you more of his style I like to use his style of doing trees and bushes and things like that and uh, he he was of great influence because he would come I always see him every once in a while but whenever he'd come he'd bring you like a whole sheet of drawings and you could pick one and you could take that and you could keep it and it was a really great way of him just to freely give some of his art uh, to me, being a seven-year-old, I was very excited to have a real artist be just giving me some of his artwork. Um, I don't actually have any of that still now. I wish I did. 
Um, it's probably my parents' house somewhere. Um, unfortunately, I don't know where all those went. But um, it still was a huge impact to me. So I have to really say thank you to my great uncle Shorty. Uh, that would be my father's father's brother. Um, huge impact. Yeah, my interest in art continued me. as I went to college. I take any training. Yes, I took a year of art in college. Now remember, my major I have a master's degree actually in music. So I did a bachelor's degree and a master's in music. That's where the piano performance comes in, where I was doing music, not art. But while I, from my electives, I decided to take some painting courses and to take some drawing classes, and they were just great because they really helped me cement and bring together some of my skills. Since then, I've been learning how to paint better by actually watching YouTube videos, just like these ones that I put out. I watch other people's videos, and I enjoy seeing what they're doing. I'm looking just trying at how to they're doing improve it. myself through watching other people. And um, so YouTube is a fantastic source for that, as well as looking, going into museums. Um, I have a membership to the North Carolina Museum of Art. They have all kinds of wonderful exhibits there where I can see masterpieces. Recently went and saw um, Escher. Of course, everyone knows Escher with his um, just bizarre perspectives and impossible geometries like the Penrose abstract, abstract and stuff like that. That's kind of a funny story. I hated abstracts. I never liked abstracts. I didn't understand them. Why on earth would someone want to spend their time painting paint that just looked like flat paint. I didn't get it. Why would I do that? And actually, I held that position until about three months ago. And then I tried my first abstract, and I was like, oh, it's fun for the artist. That's really what it is. It's fun for the artist to paint an abstract because it's challenging in a way that I didn't expect. It's one thing to be like, I'm trying to create a landscape, or I'm going to draw this dog, or I'm going to draw this tree or whatever, um, or I paint it, I mean. Um, but it's a whole other thing to say, okay, I'm not going to actually depict an object, I'm just going to express myself in color and to make it be meaningful and make it be moving and interesting. That's difficult, and that's a whole other ball game as far as challenging. So when I started doing abstracts more recently, um, taking the skills I had learned from doing rep representational art and then applying them to the abstract field, um, I'm kind of creating my own unique things where I do, like I said, I do things that are kind of quasi-representational, quasi-abstract. It's sort of impressionistic at times, sometimes not. Um, I just kind of, wherever I feel inspired and want to go, that's what I do. I just keep moving. And I don't know what's going to happen next. If I see an idea I like, I, okay, I'll take that, and then I'll look over here, and this artist doing that, I'll try that. And you just start putting things together, and before you know it, you have your own style, which is really just coming out of, a lot of different styles that I'm just pulling from and whatever I can go with my own head. Um, I have different ideas and for new paintings all the time and my head is constantly going with new ideas. The experience so, of painting is very freeing, it's very relaxing. And um, so the answer to your question, yes, I have had training somewhat, some, and I've also been self-taught some as well by watching YouTube videos. All right, last question I have here. Um, this is a difficult question. <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm gonna answer this, but I'll give it a try. Is it true or a fallacy that everyone can paint? I.e., do you already have the have? Excuse me. <clears throat> do you already have to have the gene, so to speak? Hmm. Okay. Where do I start with that? I'm gonna draw on music because I'm a piano teacher and I teach piano lessons to kids and adults every week. And I have been teaching piano lessons for over eight years, so I have a lot of experience teaching music. Um, teaching art, not so much. Doing art, yes, but not teaching. Um, and I've been doing art, I should say, since like I said, high school, so probably, um, let's see now, almost 10 years now? Wow, yeah, 10 years. Okay, <laughs> cool. So, here we go. I'm going to do this. Here we go. All right. In piano lessons, what I tell people is that anyone can learn the skill set needed to perform the piano. That same would probably be true, and I think is true of painting. Anyone can learn the skill sets needed to paint. Now, does that mean you're going to be the next Renoir or Van Gogh or whoever? You want to fill in the blank. A great, masterful artist, you know. No. Am I going to ever be those things? No. Probably not. Maybe. But it is true not. that some people are naturally inclined to learn the skills and can intuitively make connections that will allow them to do art faster. Okay? So it's true that some people are what we call, I, say, I would call in psychology, intuitive people who make connections intuitively between abstract ideas. Um, painting is kind of abstract. You're taking paint, you're putting it in different places, and through the combinations thereof, you're creating an image. 
that's fooling the eyes and making it think that it's seeing a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional plane. I mean, think about that for a second. That's kind of abstract, and trying to explain how to do it can be very physical and very concrete, but it, it also can be very technical and it can be very abstract. So some people are better suited to watch someone else do it and imitate it and be able to intuitively go forward. So people would need more help. But that doesn't mean that they can't learn the skill set. It's just how fast you learn the skill set may be what's innate or not. So I don't think anyone can innately not learn to paint. I don't think there's anybody who just can't do paint. There's no one who can just can't draw or can't learn to draw. Um, but uh, sure, we don't start out knowing how to paint at first, but we can learn the skills needed, and I think that's my point. So I would say I'm of the position that anyone can you learn to paint. You can learn the skill needed to effectively do the painting. It's also a matter of time. I tell all my piano students when I teach them, I say, you know, what you're putting into this, how much you put that in, whatever the effort you put into it, that's how much you're going to get out of it. So the more time you spend on this skill set, because it is a skill set, painting and playing piano are the same kind of thing in my mind. It's a skill set, it's time and effort and energy you're putting into something is what you're going to get out of it. So it's just like that with painting, I think. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And those are my thoughts. So uh, thank you for keeping up my ramblings here in a little bit and for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed this short Q&A with me, artist Charles Wolf. Please don't forget to check out my art blog. That is impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. Again, that's impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. You also can watch my YouTube channel, also titled Impulsive Artistry, for more great videos like this. Um, I try to do at least one video a week. Um, maybe more if I can. I also I know on the actual blog I have three new blog posts every week Monday Wednesday Fridays And so I'm also on Twitter and posting six times uh, not six times excuse me six days a week about three to four times per day So check those places out as well. Of course, I'll be putting links to all this in the description below Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope that you have a phenomenal fantastic creative and artistic day Okay, thanks so much guys See you later